Good evening. It's my privilege to spend this time with you tonight. I thank Pastor Dan and Pastor Maria and Glendy for the invitation to share our family's story with you as a part of the, our Lenten journeys. My name is Heidi Marie Pearson Wyatt. I was baptized at the Our Savior's Chapel on Swedish Drive when that was our, the regular worshiping facility. I was a member of Our Savior's for 40 years. I was confirmed, married, and all three of our girls were baptized here. I was children's ministry director here for seven years. My current mission field can be found down 65 off 89th Avenue in Blaine at Christ Lutheran Church, where I'm an associate in ministry serving as the director of children's Christian education. A few updates since, we, since I became an associate in ministry. Marta, our oldest daughter, has graduated from Augsburg College in Minneapolis and is currently an assistant store manager at one of the Caribou Coffees at the airport. Laura and Sarah, the twins, are in 10th grade at St. Francis High School and doing very well. Sarah's right there. She's a little taller than she was before. Bruce and I still live on the farm north of Cooper's Corner in the same house that we have lived in for the last 26 years. In looking over our scripture text, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, and the topic for tonight, I'd like to share with you our personal family story. I found myself looking at the various roles that I play on most, if not all, days. Again, I'm Heidi Marie Pearson Wyatt, child of God, servant of Christ, serving at Christ Lutheran Church in Blaine, mom of Marta, Sarah, and Laura, wife of Bruce, daughter, of Helen Marie and Daryl. That's a picture from their anniversary. Sister of Darren, daughter in law of Joanne and Archie Wyatt, sister in law of Joe and Nancy Wyatt, an associate in ministry in the ELCA, co worker, friend, and caregiver. Each of these roles contain many different aspects, but first allow me to give you a little bit more of our family history recently. Six years ago, things in our family were very different. My mother was anticipating having back surgery and she was be because she was beginning to walk with a pronounced limp and her daily activities were being hindered. My mother, as many of you know, always moved mile a minute and she was starting to slow down in large part due to the difficulty she found in moving. The surgery was billed as successful, and she had more strength than she had had in a very long time. In August of that year, Mom was still having some issues with healing, but she had just had surgery in June, and she had a mini stroke. The doctor said she had two more that fall, and she's continued to have these mini strokes, totaling nine at last count. All along, I was taking on more and more responsibilities for my mother's care. Driving to appointments, scheduling appointments, laying out her weekly pills. One year, Dad and I figured out we went, over to, went to over 200 appointments. Sometimes we had multiple appointments in one day. Dad and I were getting tired. Mom would seem to get better for short periods of time, but then would have another many strokes and things would worsen again. She was also diagnosed with early stage dementia. Dad assumed, started assuming more of the shopping, cooking, laundry, cleaning, and I did the medical, legal, and financial items. My parents appointed me their power of attorney. We also updated wills and care directives. We continued in this pattern for five years. Then in January of 2013, everything changed again. I knew something was wrong with my dad when it was too cold to go ice fishing. <laughs> my dad was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver and given nine to 18 months to live. So I began to manage my dad's appointments, schedules, and pills. 
At that point, my mother was taking 23 different meds, and my dad was on 22. I would take mom to her appointments and then take dad to his. Some of you would stay with my mom while I took dad to the VA in St. Cloud, as she would worry, and you helped keep her calm. Thank you. Meals would also arrive for my parents and my family. A day full of appointments would often end with a hot dish or meal from a dear friend. Again, thank you. Dad continued to not be doing well and was getting t I was getting tired. In February of 2013, Dad received a blood transfusion and ended up staying overnight in St. Cloud. I remember not sleeping well the night before and knew I was going on a mission to St. Cloud by myself like a grown-up to pick up my dad. I found my dad amongst the maze of buildings at the VA and thank heavens for our cell phones. I met and thanked his nurses and we were leaving. Mission accomplished. But the next thing I remember was waking up in an ambulance and being asked a number of questions. Did I have diabetes? No, that was in remission since I had lost 111 pounds. Did I have blood sugar issues? No, I don't think so. Did you take someone else's meds? No. <laughs> had this ever happened before? No. But my question was, where's my dad? The MT assured me that he was okay and would be along shortly. The security officers from the VA would help him. My husband had been contacted and was on the way. We had had a little accident. This was due to the fact that I had just had a seizure. Dad was okay, and thank heavens for big snowbanks. The snow had prevented damage to the car and both of us. Trips between St. Cloud VA, Minneapolis VA, Cambridge Medical Center, Coon Rapids Medical Center, and HCMC Medication management, working full time, and taking care of my family were how my days were filled. I didn't manage at all, though. God did. I was just the one he used. But I was getting tired, and it was starting to show. A late snowstorm was predicted for the next day, and Dad was scheduled for an appointment. It was March of 2013. How bad could a spring storm be? As I watched the news, the predictions of ice, sleet, snow were getting worse and worse. I knew that I would have to manage dad in a wheelchair through the VA, park the car, and get everything done. I looked across the couch at Bruce, and before I even said a word, he said, I will, no problem. <laughs> he knew I was getting nervous about the driving and getting dad to where he needed to be, and Bruce was willing to drive. My nerves were calmed. We were going to take the pickup due to the fact that it had a four-wheel drive and would be better in these conditions. Asking for help was not as difficult as I thought, especially from my husband. He was helping me to care for my parents, his in-laws. This truly was love for me, for my parents, and for the God we serve. Our drive to St. Cloud usually took about an hour and ten minutes. On this snowy, stormy day, it took two hours. Bruce said not to tell you it took more than that because then it will look like a wimp. <laughs> it was difficult, but Bruce got us there safely, and he pushed Dad's wheelchair through the VA for me. The doctor was concerned when he saw my dad due to a number of factors. The doctor at the Minneapolis VA had not drained fluid from my dad's abdomen as the St. Cloud doctor had requested. Dad was now retaining much fluid in his abdomen. His breathing was labored, and he could barely walk. The doctor wanted to admit my dad to the hospital. Note that school was canceled here at home and in St. Cloud's and the roads were getting worse. The ambulance company was contacted for the purpose of transport to Minneapolis. They said they would transport, but not to Minneapolis, due to the road conditions. They would, however, transport to the St. Cloud Hospital. We believe that the snowstorm and resulting hospitalization at the St. Cloud Hospital was what saved my dad's life. I made a call to a friend back home. The person who was sitting with my mom needed to leave. Could this friend go and stay with my mom? Well, of course, came the reply over the phone. Not only would she check in on my mom, but they would have supper together, and if need be, she would stay overnight. 
Transport to the St. Cloud Hospital took a minimal amount of time. They drained fluid from my dad's abdomen to help with the symptoms he was having. He needed to stay in the hospital for a few days. Calls were made to our saviors and to Christ Lutheran. Prayers continued. Over the next couple of days, dad had started to regain his strength. He came home and in about six weeks started to feel better. Our life continued through the summer with our normal routine. I would call each morning and stop by every other day, looking at bills, laying out meds, checking in on my parents. Dad was getting better and better, even beginning to lose weight and watch by watching his diet and exercising. Mom was declining. Some days were good, some days weren't. The first week of September was going to bring change for us again. Dad had donned a hard hats on Wednesday, and I was getting ready for work and Mom called. She said she wasn't feeling well and couldn't remember how to get a hold of Dad on his cell phone. I was scared, but I stayed calm. I told her to just sit, and I would get Dad home. I called his cell, and he headed back across 65. I called the hospital, described her symptoms, and determined that she had had or was having a stroke. Both Dad and I headed for the hospital with Mom in the car. Dad pulled the car into the ambulance entrance, and they began to work to stabilize my mother. Her confusion was increased, and her symptoms, too. While sitting in the waiting area, Dad told me that Mom had refused to take her pills that morning, and he just couldn't do it anymore. After Mom was stabilized, and it was determined that she had suffered a stroke, I headed home stopping by the assisted living facility in Isani to check on an opening for my mother. They didn't have a current one, but would put her on the top of the list. My mother was then moved from the hospital to rehab care at Grace Point in Cambridge, and then to Prairie Senior Cottages in Isani. My dad, Bruce, Laura, Sarah, my friend Lori, and I set up my mom's new room. It was hard, but we did it, and mom liked it. Fall came and went, and winter began. Mom suffered another mini stroke as preparations for Christmas began. Dad and I were purchasing groceries on December 23rd in Cambridge for our Christmas celebrations. We had picked up things at one store and needed just six more things on my list. I told Dad I would just run in and get them real quick. I picked up the first four and remember reaching for the pack of Rolo candies to make a favorite Christmas treat. The next thing I remember was waking up as I was being unloaded from the ambulance at Cambridge Hospital. I had had another seizure, this time in the middle of Cub. Dad was waiting in the car outside and the Cambridge police and an ambulance arrived and he just knew it was me and he rushed in. He identified who I was and that he was my dad. He then called Bruce and they both headed to the hospital. I was given medication and discharged later that night Christmas was celebrated with the whole family at Prairie Senior Cottages. We had our usual Christmas food of sausage and potatoes, and it was good, but another change was coming. In January, my mother fell, broke two ribs, and also had another severe stroke. She needed to go to a nursing home. A place was found for her at Ecumen, also known as Margaret Parmley, in Chisago City, as she had two additional strokes since that time so three since Christmas. My doctor appointment to follow up after my second seizure was not what I had hoped for. I was diagnosed with epilepsy. And due to the fact that I had two seizures in 10 months, I was not to drive. What was I gonna do? Not only did I have to get to work, I had to care for my parents and my children and my family. I needed to be able to drive but it was not safe for me to do that until we could figure out my medications and I was seizure free for three months. I needed to rely on my family, our friends, and our faith communities. My now 82 year old father was the one, the one that was diagnosed with only nine months to live, now drives me to work most days <laughs> and comes and gets me. My colleague also helps to get me to, to and from work, and some days I work from home. Bruce is often found driving dad to appointments, and Laura and Sarah, who now have their permits, are willing to drive and help with transportation. So we again faced with, are faced with change. 
It has become a constant factor in our lives. We've learned to cherish each wonderful moment and try to release the difficult ones. I found that I have felt just about every emotion that I could imagine, and sometimes all at once. None of them are wrong. They just are. Bruce has most often been the one listening to my heart. The toughest days are when many decisions are needed to be made to care for someone, or when my mom doesn't know who I am. But those of you that know my mother know she did tell me things. Over time, and that is stuck, she said to me, when I'm difficult, and those of you that knew my grandmother, you can put this frame, this and that. You remember what I am saying now. I love you and trust the decisions you have to make. At the time, beginning about 40 years ago, I didn't know why she was telling me that over and over, but I do now. When things are hard, it is what I know. She still loves me. I can't deny the importance of love in all this. The love of my parents for each other, the love they have for my brother and I, the love I have with Bruce, the love for my, the rest of my family, from and for my children, but also the love of our friends and faith community. There have been times when I didn't think I would be able to make it through something and strength would come. I could and do feel your prayers and love. Someone will often say, I've been praying for you and your family, and my response has been, I know. I felt it. What can people do to help others to be the court of three as mentioned in our text? Listen to each other. Everyone's needs are different. Everyone feels things differently. Nothing is right or wrong, it just is. Pray for each other. Always know that when we don't know what to pray for or about, God knows. Love each other. We can never hear that too much. Listen for what God is telling you. Sometimes it's a small, still voice within. Throughout this journey, I've thought that God has often been silent, but he has always been faithful, even though I have not always been listening. Where have I found God in all of this? In the people he has provided that have surrounded us with love and caring. Sometimes a hug, sometimes a prayer. Sometimes a meal, sometimes company, sometimes an exercise class, sometimes a listening ear. Sometimes a fishing adventure, sometimes a men's retreat, and sometimes a cup of coffee. All of these actions are being the hands and feet of God. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus in the form of our Savior's Lutheran Church and Christ's Lutheran Church as you have cared for our family. Thank you. Amen.